So over the holidays, I wanted to work on some terrain projects that were a little bit different to my usual kind of stuff. Like, I usually try to make Brutal Cities kits pretty simple, straightforward to make. Um, and so it, it's kind of like a little bit of a rigid geometry, I suppose. Um, so this video, I'm going to show you how I turned this kind of stuff into this. Since I was going to have a game of Necromunda with some friends and my partner, I wanted to do a quick and fun project to have some terrain for the game. Something a bit different to the usual stuff. So it's a bit of a palette cleanser and it's inspired by deconstructivist architecture. I think a lot of deconstructivist architecture has influenced a bunch of computer games and art set in post-apocalyptic worlds. So the main idea is to create a bunch of modular MDF components that can anchor into blue foam. Rigid foam insulation is commonly used in the hobby for making terrain and scenery. I used a pen to make it easier to penetrate and place the barbed MDF anchor. I thought that some type of barbs would be useful to stop the MDF connector from coming out easily. This way you might not need glue. But this is all very preliminary and I'm going to be developing this idea further. So I'd love some feedback on this concept and if you can see this being useful for your games or terrain projects. The little round parts on the end of the anchors allow you to position the MDF planes in different angles and configurations. To get the first sketch design going, I first needed to create a rock spy from foam. My friend Steven has lent me a hot wire cutter which I haven't used for years. He has a great hobby Instagram by the way, you should give him a follow. After I cut the basic shape with the hot wire cutter, I then used a knife to create cracks and break up the geometry of the rock further to get a little bit more realism. You can see here how flexible the kits could be, using different shapes and these round joint components. Steven has created a reactor looking terrain piece. A great benefit to this type of geometry is that it can be scale agnostic. If you don't have any pieces that are obviously doors or furniture made for humans, you could equally use this for 28mm games, 15mm games, Battletech or other scales, whatever you want. Once I built up the rock stack, I just experimented with different compositions to get something interesting enough but still similar to the concept sketch. A great benefit to this type of geometry is that it can be scale agnostic. If you don't have any pieces that are obviously doors or furniture made for humans, you could equally use it for 28mm games, 15mm games, Battletech or other scales. Once I built up the rock stack, I just experimented with different compositions to get something interesting enough but yet similar to the initial concept sketch. You can play with the pieces and find something you like to create a cool sculptural form. I'll design some more modular MDF shapes and junctions to give you even more versatility for your own projects. You can use PVA glue to make the rock spire, but I just used a hot glue gun so that it would dry more quickly. I made some little indentations so that the rocks would be as flush as possible and dry very quickly. I used some toothpicks to help align the rocks. I then placed the MDF structure in a position that looked suitable and then used a knife to refine the rocks so that the structure was closer and could spike into the foam. I sealed the rocks with some acrylic paint and after a couple of layers, used some grey spray paint. Here I'm adding some window cleaner to reduce the surface tension and make a brown wash for the base. The rocks were then dry brushed light grey after dusting the grey rocks with white spray paint. The point of dusting is to add speckles of white spray paint to create a nice texture. I tried out some old suede effects paint which is kind of cool for concrete. You can get this textured paint from hardware stores. A couple of coats of that made this large piece of foam look decent enough. I wanted this piece to break up line of sight for games and allow me to use it as a base to attach these MDF anchors and forms. I wanted some brown or reddish primer for the MDF so that if the seal and top coat gets rubbed off, the brown primer will emulate rusty steel underneath. For the first time I tried out some matte medium and some cheap acrylic paints with my airbrush. It worked out well. The cheap art shop acrylics are often too glossy for hobby purposes, so the matte medium is really handy. I thought that the paint was thicker than miniature paint, so thinned it as well as used some flow improver. Building up some layers of rusty brown and then orange, I focused the orange around the edges of the engraved plates. I had to make a few more cuts in the foam to get the MDF structure closer to the rock spire. I really like the way that these metal plates wrap around the rocks here, it's almost like a sail. You can see how flexible these round joints are for making interesting shapes. Once you are happy with the position, just use some glue to lock it in place. Again, the designs were very quick, so I'll be working on some more pieces soon. Please comment and like and subscribe to let me know what you think of these designs. You can see here that there are some round holes for placing cables. To break up the form of the terrain and make it a little bit less obvious that it's made from MDF, I've been recycling some old broken electronic cables. I also used some green garden wire to create a conduit that snakes up the rock spire. It's loose enough in detail so that the kit is still flexible for different game scales. 
Another benefit of these abstract forms is that since it's not obvious what they are, you can angle them in different ways. This wall and platform provides cover to your units and you can use the stairs or ladders to climb up, but if you put the wall on the ground flat it could be a shade or shelter structure in a wasteland. I'm really looking forward to playing some more games on these kits. They work well for any sort of post-apocalyptic or sci-fi games I think. I brought the table to the Infinity Tournament at CanCon recently and had some good feedback from the players and tried it out myself. So thanks for watching, I hope you like this video. Sign up to the email list at BrutalCities.com if you want to be notified when these kits will be released. Next video I plan to finally finish my oil paint tutorial. Have a good one.